The movie begins in the 18th century, under the rule of the Shotoku dynasty in Japan. During this time, a strange sickness spreads fast, affecting only men. It's so dangerous that most men who get sick end up dying. Because of this, the number of men drops a lot, leaving only one man for every four women. Following the epidemic, women take over jobs and roles that men used to have, including all the top spots in politics and business. Women start doing all kinds of work, even building things, to earn money for their families. Meanwhile, men are seen as precious and stay home, their main role being to stay healthy and look good. They also provide sperm for women wishing to have children. Men become like luxury goods, only available to rich women. Some men turn to working as prostitutes to make money for themselves and help their families. In this world where women lead, the Mizuno family finds it hard to have enough to eat. They have a young, good-looking son, Unoshin, who dreams of becoming a skilled swordsman and a great warrior someday. Even though they're really short on money, Unoshin's mom won't let him sell himself to earn cash. Unoshin is deeply thankful for his mom's decision and loves her a lot for it. While other men focus on looking pretty and wearing makeup and nice clothes, Unoshin dedicates his time to practicing samurai skills. Besides being skilled with a sword, Unoshin is known for his big heart. He helps women who want children but can't afford it without asking for anything in return. Because of this, many rich girls come to his place hoping to marry him. But Unoshin turns them all down, telling his mom they should find a good match for his sister instead. Meanwhile, Unoshin is secretly in love with Onobu, a girl he's known since he was a kid. Since Onobu comes from a rich family, Unoshin has always been too shy to tell her how he feels. He knows there's a big gap in wealth and social standing between their families, so he keeps his distance from her. Later, Unoshin tells his family he plans to join the Ohoku, the special part of the castle where men who serve the queen reside. Unoshin aims to join the Ohoku to better his family's finances and avoid Onobu. Ohoku men are groomed to charm the Lady Shogun, the queen. Before heading to Ohoku, Unoshin sees Onobu, who begs him not to go, worried it'll harm what they have. Despite her efforts, Unoshin departs after giving her a kiss. Unoshin gets to the castle and pleads with Matsushima, a high-ranking member of Ohoku, to let him in. Matsushima agrees, but hesitantly, then takes him on a tour. He tells Unoshin he must begin at the bottom, cleaning and looking after the possessions of those above him. Matsushima adds that if Unoshin proves his worth and dedication, he'll have the chance to climb up the ranks. In this part, it's revealed the current Lady Shogun is just seven, giving the young men plenty of time to ready themselves and vie for her favor before she reaches marriageable age. Matsushima and Unoshin then encounter Huzinami, the top-ranked man in Ohoku. As they part ways, Matsushima warns Unoshin to keep silent about Ohoku's inner workings and traditions to outsiders. As Unoshin settles into his room and meets his peers, he faces teasing from some of the men about his hair and clothes. But Unoshin stands up for himself using his samurai training. He also explains why his hairstyle matters to a samurai. In his early days at Ohoku, Unoshin is loaded with more chores than anyone else. Yet, he doesn't grumble and handles his duties smoothly. The bullies don't stop. They trip Unoshin when he's carrying food, leaving him to go without meals for days. Then, one evening, three high-ranking men attack Unoshin, attracted by his looks and wanting to sexually take advantage of him. But Unoshin, with his samurai skills, quickly overpowers them and drives them off. Unoshin confides in Sugishita, a colleague, about the nighttime assault. Sugishita explains that in Ohoku, it's common for men to engage in sexual relationships due to the lack of women and the young age of the Lady Shogun. He suggests that with no women around and the Shogun being only seven, men turn to each other to satisfy their needs. Sugishita also advises Unoshin that forming close ties with top-ranking men could boost his chances for promotion. Unoshin, however, is repelled by the idea thinking the men's energies are misused on each other rather than aiding women outside the castle in having children, thus giving them a meaningful role. As Unoshin cleans the castle, he stumbles upon a dojo practice and watches through a gap. Captivated, he begins to mimic the moves with his broom in his hand. Huzinami sees him and invites him into the dojo to join in. Impressed by Unoshin's talent, Huzinami bends the rules despite Unoshin's low rank and allows him to engage in a practice match with Tsuroka, a top dojo fighter. Everyone expects Unoshin to lose and laugh at him, but he quickly proves them wrong by defeating Tsuroka. Despite the loss, Tsuroka mocks Unoshin's skills. That night, Unoshin shares his doubts about Ohoku with Sugishita, who recounts how Ohoku allowed him to support his family. Reflecting on this, Unoshin feels fortunate for his family's support. 
News of Unoshin beating Tsuroka quickly spreads throughout Ohoku, earning Unoshin praise and admiration. Disgraced by his defeat and scorned by Huzinami, Tsuroka confronts Unoshin for a rematch. Initially hesitant, Unoshin accepts, feeling compelled by the expectations of the higher-ups. The rematch is intense, but Unoshin wins again. Overwhelmed by his repeated defeat, Tsuroka attempts suicide. Witnessing his struggle, Unoshin mercifully ends Tsuroka's life to ease his suffering. Next day, the young lady shogun passes away from sickness, and a new, stronger adult shogun takes her place. This new shogun is serious about improving the nation, focusing on boosting the economy and development. Right away, she dismisses a woman who advises her to always dress in fancy clothes and prioritize looking pretty. The new shogun disguises herself and visits the city to understand the citizens' conditions, finding men treated as objects in brothels. Meanwhile, Ohoku's men, eager to impress the new shogun, begin their preparations. Only those of high rank have a chance to present themselves to her, leaving Unoshin without opportunity. However, in a fortunate turn, Huzunami upgrades Unoshin to a higher status that night, allowing him to compete for the shogun's attention alongside the others. Getting ready for the event, Unoshin goes to the tailor named Sekawa, choosing a simple yet elegant outfit. Sekawa puts great effort into making the dress perfect for Unoshin. Happy with the outcome, Unoshin wants to give Sekawa a valuable thank you gift, but having nothing at his hand, he instead shows his gratitude with a kiss. The scene moves to the day the high-ranking men assemble to welcome the Lady Shogun. While the others sport flashy, colorful outfits, they tease Unoshin for his very average black attire. Shortly after, the Lady Shogun makes her entrance. Prompting all the men to bow their heads as she passes by, she suddenly trips and hears a giggle sound from behind. The Lady Shogun quickly turns, demanding to know who laughed. Unoshin steps up to protect his neighbor, claiming it was him. Intrigued, she walks over, struck by his plain outfit and sincere look, and asks for his name. Then, unexpectedly, she invites him to spend the next night with her, shocking everyone present. Next, Unoshin stands before Huzinami, who reveals that the first man to share a night with the Lady Shogun becomes her secret lover, but must die afterwards. He explains that taking her virginity is punishable by death. Additionally, Huzinami says Unoshin's family will be compensated generously, Accepting his fate, Unoshin agrees to the arrangement. Meanwhile, the Lady Shogun learns about this tradition, which leaves her shocked and without words. That night, Huzinami and Matsushima play a game, casually talking about Unoshin's upcoming execution. At that time, they reveal that they deliberately made Unoshin the secret lover to eliminate him as a rival, viewing him as a threat. Matsushima hopes to charm the Lady Shogun and become a father figure to her future children after Unoshin's death. Meanwhile, Unoshin reflects on his feelings for Onobu as he readies himself for his fateful night with the Lady Shogun. After cleaning up and putting on a bit of makeup, Unoshin nervously approached the Lady Shogun's room. When she arrived, she began by asking him his name. She even told him her own name, Nobu. Hearing that name made Unoshin's eyes well up, as it reminded him of Onobu, his childhood sweetheart. He felt strangely grateful for this chance to spend his last night with someone who shared a similar name. Their passion ignited, they shared a night of intense love. The next morning, Unoshin learned he pleased the Shogun, but this victory came at a heavy price. Soon after, he found himself facing execution before a crowd of officials. With a single swing of the katana, his life was brought to an abrupt end. Sekawa and Sugishita mourned their fallen friend, while Unoshin's family received a hefty sum of money and a letter claiming he died peacefully from illness. Weeks later, Onobu found herself at Unoshin's grave, placing flowers and whispering her love. Suddenly, a figure emerged from the shadows. Yes, you guessed it. That's Unoshin. He explained how the kind lady Shogun, touched by his story, secretly saved him from execution with a decoy and sent him far away to start a new life. Though declared dead, he was finally free. Onobu rushed into his arms, making him promise never to leave her again. In a surprising move, the Lady Shogun declared all men free to leave the Ohoku. This decision not only eased the financial strain on the nation, but also offered the men a chance to build new lives. She encouraged them to marry and help women have children, even promising some financial support to get them started. Well, that's the end of this recap. How did you like it? Let me know your thoughts as comments. Also, consider subscribing this channel for more interesting movie and series recaps. See you in the next video, bye bye.